The only problem with this thing is it's extremely illegal. I bought these stupidest motorcycle accessories that I could find on Amazon so that you guys don't get wrapped up in it and you don't have to waste your money. Also, because I'm addicted at to buying stupid things on the internet, which is how I got my wife, who is not stupid, by the way. She's very smart. Happy anniversary, baby. And to be honest, some of the stuff really makes me wonder who is buying this stuff? I mean, like, who are these people's friends who are not stopping them from making these horrible mistakes? But the first one we have is actually, it's actually kind of a cool idea. Motorcycle GPS unit. That's a great idea. For 23 bucks. How can you go wrong? All right. That's a... It looks like a relay. Looks like a relay. So there's a plug into a relay port. And then here are some wires. Here's a very small instruction, a user manual. Do you think it looks like a relay so that the burglar doesn't know it's a tracker? Absolutely. It's disguised I, I think it does. Relay. I think it absolutely does look like that. This is how they get you. It's a big, <laughs> yeah. This is a big phishing scam. <laughs> yeah. Look at the, uh, look at the, the logo. Cool. Thanks. Look at what the, look at the map that they automatically take us to. It's this Asian map, and it says like Yang Ling Residential District. Do, 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 do. Oh, beep. Just stick it on this piece of junk random car we find. I don't even see any LEDs on. I mean, I'm a pretty smart guy. I know what an LED looks like. I feel like this is one of those things where we lose interest in it before we get it to actually like auto bike and working. Yeah, I see a blue LED. So what initially appeared to be a simple plug and play device was turning into a little cube with the sole purpose of making us look stupid. We even brought in Dan, our cameraman, who is a tech guy who wears 1990s video game t-shirts and was a drone operator in the military. You realize there's like a company in China right now like listening and watching everything we're doing. Yeah. Only one out of all the people, and it's probably a bogus review, said that they actually got it running. And he bought three more because he loved it so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so while I was super excited about this idea, and I think it's a great idea, we spent probably four hours trying to get this thing running. We had to get a little SIM card, which to get a SIM card, you have to actually get a cell phone plan. So basically, you're going to spend an extra at least $600 a year just to be able to find the guy who tracked your bike. Now, another cool thing, if we could actually get this thing to hook up, is that you could remotely turn your bike, turn, shut the bike off. So you would, you would see on your phone, oh, the thing's driving away, it's good, just doing its thing. You could kill the bike. But if you're gonna spend 600 bucks a year, just get better insurance. I mean, I wish this thing worked, but it was, you're not gonna pay 22 bucks, 23, 19, and be able to track your bike. For order support, you'd better leave a massage under your order. I'm not giving anyone no, I'm not gonna leave no massage under any order. It's super hard, it doesn't work, it sucks. So the next one on our list is that baby. Oh yeah. What is, is it, a Merce? It's when you choose to wear tennis shoes, or you wear nice shoes while you're riding, and you don't want to get your heel, see how my toes all worn out from shifting? You don't want to mess your toe up. So if you're wearing your loafers to a board meeting, you put these on. Oh, there it is. Or if you want to ride without shoes on, Makes sense now. You can shift without messing up your foot. Let's go, uh, let's go try it out. All right, so I got this on my, uh, on my Air Jordans. You know, I keep my Air Jordans really nice. Don't wear them very often, only for dress occasions. These are 10 and a half, so this is a normal size. I have to max this thing out to almost the whole way. So if you were 11s, 11 and a half, anything bigger than 10 and a half, there's no possible way this thing's gonna fit. So other than the fact that I think it's a dumb idea, you shouldn't be wearing these shoes anyway. It's not gonna fit on a lot of people's shoes. Let's go find ourselves a shifter. There we go, there's a button right here. This is how they test these things in the factory. Not even a scuff. Maybe there is a scuff right there, but it's still a stupid idea. Just uh, like a steel toe extension to put on like your slippers. Just wear the right shoes. That's what this is. I still hate it. I still hate it. I think it's a stupid idea. Let's go to the next product. All right, what do we have next? This is a Bluetooth helmet brake light. This, this puts your brake light on the back of your helmet so it's more obvious for people to see. It, it, it makes sense. So I was curious how they're gonna know if it, it has G sensors in it and that's what lights it up. 
Really? I, th- yeah. I thought it'd be connected to like the brake line. That's what I thought too. I thought it would have been a little module or something you put in the brake line, but no. You don't have to do anything that's just attaches to okay. your helmet. Here we go. Oh, oh. Cool. Let's go test it out. All right, now we got this one installed. I do love this idea. I think it's a really good idea. And just so you know, all the cool kids are installing theirs upside down. But this thing sticks on. This is already curved. It's got a really strong magnet. It's actually a pretty nice snug. It's not going to fall off. It's a pretty nice snug fit. You got to really pull it off. Oh, there we yeah. go. There we go. The only problem with this thing is it's extremely illegal. This will get you pulled over and possibly thrown in jail. Let me show you guys why. All right, so is it on at all right now? Yeah, see, it's like back wow, and forth. Wow, that's really in- light. What does it do when I break? Nothing. Ah, <laughs> let, me, let me change the mode. Is that a different mode? No. I'm pretty sure it's illegal for me to be flashing red and blue. Did that one change? Uh, yeah, now it's flashing fast. Red and blue. Really cop colors. Yeah, you're straight After we off. realized that according to the law, at least half of the settings on this thing told people that we were the police, we still couldn't get it to go red when you stopped. Until Craig had this very good idea. I wonder if it doesn't work because it's upside down. Yep, you're on. Oh, there you go. Now it works. Are you serious? Yep. Nah. Yeah. Do it again. Move your head front. Yep. I am so smart. I am so smart. All right, so you say it's working? Oh, yeah. Now it's on. I'm going to stop. Okay. Did it work? Yep. Nah. It really works? It really works. I'm going to do it again. Not even a half second, maybe a half second uh, delay from the time your real brake light turns on to the helmet brake light. Apparently, whether it's upside down or right side up, it does matter, and this thing actually works pretty good. I'm pretty impressed. I think if you got rid of the uh, blue and red flashing lights, this would really be a thing. And would be very legal. The next thing we got is possibly the most important thing you could ever have on your motorcycle and the most annoying a motorcycle bike alarm and this thing costs fifteen dollars and seventeen cents i'm good my prediction is this is going to be the most annoying thing you could possibly have on your motorcycle i, I feel like everybody's just desensitized anymore to alarms like who, who really who starts looking or running to a car when they hear alarm anymore looks like in in terms of quality of key fobs hold that key fob and tell me what you think oh wow it feels like nothing it feels cheap it does feel cheap Ah, that is loud. Let's go test it out. Let's go put it on the bike. Let's see if it works. So we got the alarm installed in this thing. It is a self-contained unit and has this stupid little key fob that has lock. Unlock. A Z or a lightning bolt. And some type of hat. All right, let's, uh, let's arm it. Hey, that guy's stealing my bike! And then you run away. At this point, your neighbors all start getting pissed off at you. They start to hit you. You look out the window. No. Right, it's, it's disarmed. Let's go test it out in the uh, real world. All right, so you're parking this thing outside of your apartment in the city, and you don't want anyone to steal it. You want to get notified when someone does steal it. You walk away. You arm the bike, you also have like 20 chains on there, you're parking cars around it. Yes, I'm gonna go inside. All right, here we go. Hey, my bike! That's my bike! I was like, I was like the whole way in the building. So I'll, I'll be honest with you. I do think that this, okay, I've never lived in a big city. I hear theft is a big issue in a lot of these cities. We sold bikes to people that actually got their bikes stolen. Um, and most, they're not, they're not hot wiring it. They're picking the bikes up, sticking it in the back of a truck, or they're rolling it down the street. I think that will, and actually, I think that would deter somebody. 
if you were walking a bike back or you had, a, you had it in the back of your truck and it's going off like that, you don't have enough time to rip stuff off and find out where the, where the alarm's coming from. I think you're just gonna run away. So I do think that actually might work and that is super cheap and super simple. And it was, it, I mean, it's pretty sensitive too. I, I mean, just a matter of. Maybe if you move Maybe, really slowly. Yeah. Ah, did you, it was like when you kicked it? <laughs> I don't know, I didn't kick it hard. It happened when you kicked it. You gotta be a smooth criminal. If you're all yanking it and stuff, it's not gonna work. For whatever the price was, that's not that bad. And I think, unless it starts malfunctioning and going off while you have it, actually, if, if it, even if it does malfunction, it's not wired up to the entire vehicle. Yank the seat off and throw it in the, in the woods. This could be useful for some people. All right, now the next one we have is normally gonna cost you around 400 bucks per set. This one costs us $22.39 a piece. These are Bluetooth headsets put inside your helmet. As you can see from the description right there, you put them inside your helmet and then you can automatic answering, hands-free, music, Apple and Android, long standby time. You can talk to each other and you can talk with your friends and it connects to your phone. And this could save you hundreds of dollars. So these things go inside your, so instead of like, having a big unit. So normally you have this, you have these things that go inside your helmet, right? Apparently this is the whole unit. This is everything right here. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's plug these things in our helmets. Let's go see if they work. All right, so we installed these cool little Bluetooth things in the, uh, in the helmet. It's installed very easily. You press this one button right here. Here it says power on. It was really easy connected to my Bluetooth. Like that was easy. I just, I pulled out my phone. I looked in there, I saw it, I connected it. Bam, this thing said connected. That was awesome. Yeah, it reconnected. Motorcycle buying revolution. And since then, everyone has been buying their motorcycles. These actually don't communicate with each other. No. So it's not for food. like rider, passenger, or a group of riders. You connect to your phone, which you can call their people. Yeah. So let's actually throw this thing on, I jump on the bike, and I'll call you guys and see what it sounds like while we're riding. It's connected. BT30. Craig, what's up, man? All right, here we go. Can you hear me? I can hear you great. Awesome. Can you hear I me? This, yeah, I can hear you. Really? Yep. You hear any yeah, wind? I hear, I hear you fine. I hear you loud and clear. All right, now I got some volume. Can you hear me good? Yeah, I can hear you pretty good. I'm stopped. Let me, let me, let me get back on the move. Let me, let me try something here a second. I'm gonna put these earmuffs on the uh, microphone and uh, give it, a, give it a, some talking to. Give it a good talking to. Give it out. I don't know how long the battery life's gonna last. I don't, I'm not sure they're gonna do eight hours. Do you have your helmet open or closed? Open. Open, because I'm not getting a lot of wind noise. I'm going, um, I'm going 40 miles an hour. Yeah, and I'm not picking up any wind noise. Amazing. I'm impressed. All right. I'm, impressed. I'm coming back. The uh, our license plate thing fell off the back of the bike. Oh, that's neat. On the highway. And I'm running out the gun. <laughs> I guess that needs a license plate to hold it on. I'm pretty impressed. So in the test to see um, whether these things work and how they sound, I'm actually pretty impressed. Listening to music to this, to be honest, I can't tell that much of a difference between the, these speakers and my Senna speakers. And we spent a whole lot more money. Now I'm sure the battery life's longer. For 23 bucks, it worked. Power off. The next one is possibly the dumbest idea we've ever seen. And it can be solved very simply in much different ways, but Bam, it is the burn jacket. And that goes on your shin. <laughs> Listen, I'm laughing. I guarantee you both of us yeah, have do. big calf burns on yeah, our, my scars on pretty our well calves healed up, but yeah, I from got that yeah. GSX-R 1000, both calves. GSX-R 600. Yeah, so, so it's, I'm not saying like there's no reason for it, but this was made by someone who burned his calf on a bike, and I thought this, thought this would be a good idea, not thinking, I should just wear pants instead of wearing shorts 
or riding naked or whatever he was doing. I'm anxious for this one. I'm gonna... We have to test this one out. Yeah. That might fit my calf. Ain't gonna fit... Is that going to fit your calf, Craig? It's going to fit my calf. Craig has a 30-inch calf. All muscle. All Let calf. Let me see. I'm going to... Thirty-five ninety-nine. So this is more expensive than half the stuff. You could have bought a GPS unit. You could have bought almost everything we bought for less than this. And all you have to do is not buy this and just wear pants when you ride. All right, let's go test this out. So when you want to go out riding with your buddies and like an idiot, you decide to wear shorts. Like a man. How, how high should exhaust gases go? 200? Uh, yeah. Somewhere in there. Something 220 will plus. burn you pretty quick. And I'm gonna stick my calf on there. Let's go see how it works. We're gonna get it hot enough that we don't wanna to touch it. And then we'll jam Sean's leg into it. That's like 500 Fahrenheit. So we're leveling off at like 450 Celsius. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right, so it's pretty hot. I would not want to be touching my calf to this. Ah! Five, 500 degrees you, Celsius. You, you'd be like, ah, I'm touching. It's getting hot. It'd be interesting to take that off and see if that rubber will melt. But it's not burning you. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with, it's stupid, but it does work. All right, let's go to the next one. And the next one we have is, of course, an action camera that we bought for $44.99. And I think it actually has two different cameras, one in the front, one in the back, to see everything around you. Apparently it can replace your GoPro and is better than a GoPro. I, I mean, I, we pay 500 bucks, 499 bucks for, for our GoPros. And this is $49.99. So it's gotta be awesome. Check it out. Instructions are all in whatever language that is. There's a lot of cables. You get a lot more cables with this than you do a GoPro. What's this, a monitor? You get a monitor, it's a, a big monitor. wire up job. Here's a, here's a lock and okay button. Lock, okay. Lock, okay. Um, I don't see a single camera I don't even here. see the camera. Here it is, here's one camera. Oh, here's the other camera. That is the camera right there. Very small camera. And you got your own little LCD screen. I'm just take this off just for those people that love ASMR. Oh. Cool. Let's go. Uh, let's go wire this up into one of our motorcycles and let's uh, let's test it out. Now that we have our $45 video recorder installed, we have a camera in the back and a camera in the front with a monitor. We're gonna go for a ride and see how it works. Installing it was easy. Four wires you have to run. You can either stick it on or screw them on, hooked it right to the battery. And then it's got a little monitor right here. How does that thing work? Yeah, no. So we put an SD card in, then you can have picture in picture. Can have, what are you eating? Oh, uh, beef jerky. Oh, nice. Yeah, thank you. So if you want to record. Is that okay or KO? Um, well, right now it's KO. Let's go try it out. Split screen, full frontal. I don't rear. think it's called full frontal. <laughs> I just want to clarify I, on it, that. I, Can you still see me? Oh, yeah, dude. Infrared? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. It's grainy. Like, it's grainier, but that makes sense. All right, let's go take a first spin. Let's go see what kind of awesome footage we can get from this thing. So just how Sesame Street was brought to you by numbers and letters, well, Bikes and Beards is brought to you by Bible Verses. And this one's brought to you by 1 John 4.11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. This is a horrible quality. I mean, this is like, it looks like the beginning of like a 1990s like skate video, skateboard <laughs> video. Yeah, it does. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this next one is, honestly, it's one of the one I'm most excited about because I think it's one of the coolest things ever. It's a TPMS monitoring system for your motorcycle, but doesn't actually use TPMS sensors. It goes on top of the valve stem, $55.99. You don't have to do anything. You just plug it in, check it out. Yeah, here's your monitor, it's a little giant, but here's your monitor system. Tells you your time, and then front wheel, rear wheel. Two little things that plug on, to, that screw onto your uh, wheels. They have F and R check to them. Packaging is actually pretty nice. And then a bunch of things you use to connect it. That's where you can store it up. And so uh, some bikes actually already have this. Newer bikes have this. Uh, my new Road King has this. Um, the Concourse has the it. The Concourse has but had they it. They never were. Wait. You're supposed to check your tire pressure before you go anywhere. 
this we're gonna do it for you. I think a lot of guys get into something like this. I, I just don't think it works. So let's uh, let's plug it up and check it out. Guys, this thing's telling me. This thing's already telling me the stuff. Give me some Fahrenheit. There we go. All right. So it's saying 53 degrees Fahrenheit. We're not sure if that's the tire or if that's the ambient temperature. I don't know. We'll find out because that should keep on going up, isn't it? It's pretty cold outside. So a big question a lot of people always have when they're riding, not a lot of people, but people who are really dialing it in is whether their tires are up to temperature. You know, when you do a track day, you do like a hot lap and you don't want to really push your bike until the tires are up to temperature. All right, so right now, let's say in front, front tire, 39, 38. Let's check for rear tire. Rear, 42, 42. All right, guys, that wraps it up. Hopefully that helps you guys out. If there's any uh, items on Amazon or the internet that you want us to buy to review, leave in the comments below. We'll see you guys next time.